So, here's yet another double review. Let's start off with Sonic the Hedgehog, a movie with a history. So, as many of you already know, the response to the first trailer was less than enthusiastic, mainly due to the infamous first design of the titular character. And then the backlash got so bad that they actually needed to delay it for redesigns, because that'll change the fact that this is the same movie. Yeah, it actually did turn out to be better than advertised. And now it's a box office underdog story for the ages. But the only reason I even saw this was because I got a discount ticket to this movie in particular, and it was actually pretty good. It is directed by Jeff Fowler, whose only directing credit up to this point was the Academy Award nominated short animated film Go For Broke. Rather than closely following any lore that the games may have, it instead uses a different storyline where Sonic is an alien stranded on Earth to escape enemies on his home planet. This movie feels almost completely like a different movie than the one that was in the first trailer. Amazing what a bad design and a woefully mismatched song could do. I can't even imagine most of the actual movie with that design. It's fun and funny thanks in no small part to Sonic himself. The action is about as exciting as action sequences featuring a cartoon character in a live action environment could be, which is actually more than you may think. Jim Carrey also gives a good performance as the villain Dr. Robotnik. It is very reminiscent of his early performance as the energetic weirdo such as in Ace Ventura or The Mask. He's clearly having a blast with this role and it's entertaining to watch. Now for the cons. First off, the story is the kind of thing that you've seen in countless other family movies. Also, there are unfortunately a few jokes that seem like they're trying too hard to aim for the kids. You know, fart jokes and the like. Sonic does the floss dance at least twice in this movie. Twice. It is a typical live-action animated hybrid film, but a particularly good version of that formula. It's not perfect, but it's great for what it tries to be. Up next, we got the new DC Cinematic Universe movie, Birds of Prey, and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. From director Kathy Yan, whose only other full-length movie she helmed was something called Dead Pigs that only has a little over 200 ratings on IMDb, so I'm guessing that not a lot of people saw it. Way to stay with tradition. And written by Christina Hodgson, the writer of Bumblebee. It's really more about Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn character than the actual Birds of Prey that hold top billing over her in the title. In it, the Joker breaks up with her and she needs to deal with her feelings about it, as well as some people who now want to kill her. As you all may know, that character was introduced in Suicide Squad, a movie that I don't completely hate, actually. The first time I saw it, I walked out of the theater thinking it was okay. I rewatched it recently to see if it really was that bad, and yeah, maybe it didn't hold up, but I still had fun with it. I didn't even hate Jared Leto's Joker. I mean, he was different from most of the portrayals, but I couldn't bring myself to dislike him. And on the rewatch, I actually kind of wanted to dislike him because he seemed like an asshole, but I couldn't. But anyway, but the praise much better. Since Joker was not tied to the DC Cinematic Universe, this is the first entry to that franchise to get an R rating. Ironically, it's also the first one since the kid sent to Shazam. In my review of that movie, also in a double review completely by coincidence, I said that it was my favorite DC movie yet. Now I can't tell whether or not this one is better. It is a funnier movie than Suicide Squad, with a more consistently fun and humorous tone. The action sequences are smaller and more constrained than those in most other superhero movies, and more closely resemble something out of the John Wick movies. It's even more stylized than most other movies of this nature, including Suicide Squad, with an animated opening sequence and a story that isn't always completely linear. Some scenes, like the backstory for the character of Huntress, even carry a little bit of a Tarantino vibe. Margot Robbie is as excellent as before in the role. She creates a persona that is crazy and sadistic, yet still somehow relatable and likable. Ewan McGregor also does a great job of portraying the villain in a manner that's as over the top as anything else in this movie. Anyway, this is a really good action movie. It doesn't require you to have seen any DC movies beforehand to understand what's going on, which I guess is one advantage that this franchise has recently gotten over Marvel, at least artistically. Even if you hated Suicide Squad, this is still an extremely fun movie that at least deserves a chance. 